Hey gang, we are at All Saints Cemetery in Des Plaines today, and we are going to tell the story, a jaw-dropping story, a horrible story of a woman's body who was taken, taken just before the funeral, before she could be buried by some lunatic, some, some ghoulish fiend. And the difference between this story and the other stories we've told, this person was eventually caught red-handed, so you're going to want to stick around to hear the name of this guy. I want to thank Jay Jones, Jay Smith, suggesting this story. We've been here many times. I haven't heard of it. Let's take a walk and I'll tell you the story of Therese Kortkin. She was, she was only 14 years old when this happened, when she died actually. She was at the swimming pool with all her friends having a great time. It was July late July in 1964, it was in Skokie, Illinois, which is a suburb just on the outskirts of Chicago to the north-northwest side. And it happened that she was at the swimming pool and she felt numbness in her fingers and then she lost control of her legs. They got her to the hospital but sadly, she died. I think it was the next day. So it happened during the night. She was brought, of course, preparations for burial in the casket. The funeral was going to be the next day. And during the night, her body was stolen. Now, the mass for Therese Kortkin, per her father, Leo, was held without her body the next day. What would you do? I mean, what would you do? Would you tell all the relatives that her body was stolen? Although it was coming out in the news. Not sure, but the mass went ahead at St. Peter's Roman Catholic Church without Teresa's body, the funeral. The funeral director was a man named Ray Haven and he handled it very well. The next day, the news reports started coming out, of course. The nude body of Teresa Cortgan was discovered by a motorist about three miles from the funeral home, it said. And the police were saying that they were questioning a 16-year-old Evanston boy, his name, Carlos Silva. And they were also questioning another guy who was kind of in kind of one of those hanger honors in the area, actually not just in the area, but at the, at the funeral home itself. It's kind of weird. But this boy was purported in the rep early reports he was 16, I think he was 18. This Carlos, it turned out that he was pestering her for days or weeks for a date. So they're like, hmm. So the suspicion fell. The suspicion fell on him pretty quickly. Well, they really kind of ran out of leads. They did find that the screen of a side window of the chapel at the funeral home had been cut some time after 10.30 p.m. on this Friday night it was when everyone left. And it, apparent, it was apparent that Teresa's body was carried out the side door of the chapel. Apparently, they did notice on a screen, a ragged wire section of the screen on the door had caught a thread. It was a red thread. So they sent it to the crime laboratory for analysis. And I think it was the FBI, actually, who they sent it to. While all that was going on, their autopsy had shown, of course, before her body was stolen, the results came out that she did die of a cerebral hemorrhage. Now the next day on July 27th, 1964, the next news article comes out, more information. And again, they said the, the body now, information was that 
it was found in an Evanston alley. Now Evanston is on the lake shore to the north of Skokie, or really to the northeast, I should say, by a man named James Ralph. He was 23 years old. He found her body, and he told police he saw, I, I, I was driving in the alley, and I looked. It was 2.30 in the morning, and there's this body. Now, the physicians, of course, they took a look at her body, and they found rope marks around the ankles, around her armpits, and under her chin. There were clear signs that her body had been dragged by her ankles as she was turned on her back. There was a cut on the upper part of her body, and they had said the person who stole Teresa's body, apparently they had dirty hands at the time because they found several smudges of dirt on her sides but they could not lift any fingerprints. You can't lift fingerprints off human skin, apparently. The rope marks, they said, were in different positions. They theorized that the rope marks were made when the thief tied her body before lifting her into his car. And of course, they say his, a very interesting newspaper, no suspects you know, everyone's a suspect, but they're not saying the culprit. But of course it was a guy. They theorized that the culprit might have been startled by the approach of someone while attempting to put her bathing suit back on her body. So he apparently had taken her bathing suit off. Creepy. Unfortunately, her father, Leo, at Skokie Valley Hospital had to identify her. Can you imagine? And it turned out that the police did release these two suspects the next day. It was two years later where an 18-year-old youth was arrested Saturday, it was reported, after reportedly bragging about the bizarre theft of a young girl's body from a funeral home two years ago. So he was 16, now he's 18. We're talking about Carlos Sevilla. Sevilla was his name, not Silva. More information. And guess what? He was, he was at the dance with girls. He was with two girls together at the dance. And what happened? He's bragging to them at the dance. Hey, I took this girl's body from the funeral home. I stole her right out of the casket. What did you do with her? Well, I mean, you can just imagine what the conversation was. So what happens? He goes on with his night, he's dancing. And the next thing you know, the girls, what do they do? They go to the police. I mean, what would you do? The girls tell the police, they come, Knucklehead gets arrested, and they take him in. And I'm not sure if he admitted to it or not, but I can tell you this, it was written that he was held on $5,000 bail. What happened to him? I don't know. I'm sure we can do some research and find out if he went to jail. I don't think he went to jail, but can you imagine, can you just imagine the embarrassment and his family, his parents, Here's Teresa's grave right here. Daughter, Therese Ann Kortkin, June 9th, 1950, July 22nd, 1964. What a terrible thing to happen. 
for this beautiful 14 year old girl and I know it's it's her body but it's just uh, you know it's just desecration just it's just it's terrible and we see this we see this still happening today well I, I'm gonna say of course Teresa Ann Kortgen rest in peace but when I say that and I whenever I say that I'm talking about the mortal remains and it really you know, in this case, it really applies to what I'm talking about. Rest in peace. Don't mess, you know, hopefully nobody messes with the mortal remains. Of course, the soul has gone to a better place, but I just hope that this is... She's been resting here ever since, and I'm confident that... I'm confident that Therese will rest in peace. Therese, may you be in the arms of the Lord. Rest in peace.